Hi, and welcome to your 13th iOS programming tutorial. And today, we're going to be looking at playing audio within an application. This is great for anything from playing a music or song file to playing sound effects. In this tutorial, we will simply look at how to play and pause sound or audio. In part 2, we're going to be adding a volume slider. And in part 3, I'll show you how to play audio in the background. And we'll continue on until the end where we will complete a full audio player. So let's open up Xcode and get started. Create a new single view application. And I'm just going to call mine audio player. But you can call yours whatever you want. Select use storyboards and devices iPhone, although those two are optional and you can change them if you would like. But make sure you are using automatic reference counting and including unit tests. Then click next. Now go into your main storyboard.storyboard and here we're going to add in a button. I'm just going to call my button play audio. Then let's go into our assistant editor by clicking on the tuxedo icon above the editor heading on the top right corner of Xcode. Add in a curly bracket after the add interface line and then right click and drag on play audio and drag it below the closing curly bracket but above at end. Select the connection to be an action with the event being touch up inside the type ID argument sender and we'll just call this play audio. Then we need to go into our project summary. So click on the project summary which will be the name of your project and go into your single view editor. The reason we're doing this is because we actually need to import a library we need to import AV Foundation. So what does that mean? Well, importing a library, as I've covered before, just allows you to use code that you may not be otherwise that you may not otherwise be able to use. AV Foundation allows you to play audio and video within your application. The reason it is not included by default is not all applications need to play audio and video, and thus it would be a waste of memory on the device. However, our application does need to play audio, so we do need to import the library. So at the top of the menu, you'll be in the Summary tab, click on Build Phases. You should now see a screen like this. Click on the arrow next to Link Binary with Libraries, which will contain three items. It should contain UIKit, Foundation, and Core Graphics. Don't worry if they're not all there. We need to add an AV Foundation. So find by searching for it, AV Foundation, and it's avfoundation.framework. And then click Add. Make sure it's set to be required, and it will be by default. Now we can go back to our .h file, and underneath the hashtag import UI kit, we need to do hashtag import and select the type ahead option that has uh, carrot brackets or triangular brackets, and then inside the bubble titled header type AV Foundation slash AV Foundation .h. The reason we need to do that is because by default, although we have imported the library into our application, it has not actually been imported into this particular view or this particular screen. So that's all that did. Now we can start setting up the code to play the audio. But before we do that, we need to actually import our audio file. So we can right click on the folder with the name of our project underneath where AV Foundation is a be it, and then click Add Files. Find where your audio file is located and make sure copy items into destinations group folder if needed is selected. Then double click and then click add to insert the audio file. Now Xcode and iOS don't support all types of audio file. I found an .mp3 extension to work the best and I've had some troubles with M4A and obviously MP4 is better for video. Once you've got your audio player installed, let's start adding in the code. So inside our IB action play audio, which is triggered when the button is clicked, we can put the code to play our audio. So the first thing we need to do is set up our AV audio player. So let's type, type AV audio player and we'll just call it my audio. And then add a semicolon. Then we need an NS URL and we'll call that music file. Add a semicolon. I'll explain the code once we've finished typing it out. Then type music file equals nsurl file url with path and then the one that has ns string and then add two square brackets 
and another square bracket and a semicolon. Then inside those two inner square brackets type uh, another square bracket, an NS bundle, main bundle, and then close that skirt of square brackets, and then type path for resource, and you want the one that has uh, two NS strings, and for the first NS string, type the name of your audio file. Mine is audio name. So make sure you type exactly the right spelling, otherwise your application will crash when trying to run your audio file. And then for of type, do at talking mark, talking mark, and inside the talking marks, type the type of, or the name of the type of your file. Mine's an MP3. You don't need to put a dot before it. To make it a bit easier to read, after that first colon, press enter, and after path for resource, and after of type, press enter. That just cleans up our code a bit. So that's all we need to do to set up the file, and now we can access the file. So then we can type my audio equals two square brackets AV audio player, and we'll allocate it some memory, so alloc, and then close that first set of square brackets, and then add init with contents of URL, and select the one, the first one that has a URL and then an error. So for the URL, we need to give it the name of our URL, which is music file. And then for our error, just type nil. If you wanted to display an error message, if there was an error, then that's what you do there. And I'll cover that in another tutorial. Then close the square brackets and add a semicolon. Then open the square bracket and type my audio play. And close square brackets. Now I'll run you through that code and what it does. The first thing we're doing is creating an AV audio player, which is, as it says, an audio player. That'll be what actually plays the audio. Then we're creating an NS URL, which is essentially just creating that file. Because we've imported the audio file, but we need to be able to say, set the audio player's track to be the NS URL. So then we're setting the NS URL, our music file, and we're giving it the name of the audio file and the type of audio. Then we're just saying, uh, give the audio player my audio, make the audio to play music file, or the track to play music file. The reason we're allocating it memory is because we need to give it some properties, in this case, what file to play. And then we're just saying, play the audio, from our audio player. We've set up the AV audio player as a local instance. In other words, we've set it up as a variable that can only be used within this IB action. That's a problem because our AV foundation framework needs to be able to access it. So we need to get rid of this line here, the AV audio my audio, actually cut it, so command X. And then under Add Implementation above View to Load, paste it. So now it can be accessed from anywhere within this view. The reason we needed to do that was because our AV Foundation was actually imported in i.h. So it needs to be able to access our audio player. Now run it again, and you should hear the audio now. Right, so then press the stop button to stop the audio. So the other thing that you probably want to do is add a pause or a stop button for the audio. So let's go back into our main storyboard.storyboard .storyboard and add a button underneath play audio called stop audio. And then we need to right click and drag on stop audio underneath play audio so the connection action type ID event touch up inside argument sender and we'll call this stop audio. Then go back into our view controller.m and back into my single view editor, and because we've set up AV Audio Player as a global variable, meaning it can be accessed from anywhere within this area, anywhere within uh, this area of code here, I can then just call on it in here. So I can just go square bracket my audio audio s stop. You could also do uh, my audio pause, but that's only going to pause it. So it's up to you whether you want to stop or pause your audio. I'm going to pause mine, so I'll delete the line that says stop. The difference being that if we stop the audio and then we play it again, it will start from the very beginning. If we pause the audio and then play it again, it will pick up from where it left off. So I might also go back into my storyboard and change the text to pause audio. You could add in another button for stop audio if you wanted to. Now if we run the application, and what should happen is we can click the play button and the audio will begin to play and then pause audio the audio stops but if I click play again it will pick up from where it left off
Okay, great. So we've created a basic music player that can play and pause or stop audio. In the next tutorial, we're going to add in a volume slider so the user can adjust the volume of the audio. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, please message us directly through YouTube, visit our Facebook page, or visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com. All the links are in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.